friends, Heidi here from Rain Country Homestead. God is good all the time. And today we're going to make some candles. Now, these candles aren't supposed to be fancy schmancy or anything like that or anything for set to, that you might want to sell. You can get fancy with it. This is all about just having a backup light source. So emergency candles, whatever you want to call them. We tend to use them quite a bit here because even though we're not entirely off grid, we do prefer candle or lamp light, um, though we tend to save it for the many power outages that we have. In the winter time, when we're not getting a lot of solar and we want to reserve our solar power for running our freezer and refrigerator when the power is out. So then we definitely will use our candles and our lamp light. So we do get a lot of power outages here and we actually like that because that that reminds us every time we have a power outage what is it that we still need to get ourselves in a better situation in case of long-term power outages. We actually have had one that lasted a week. So, you know, it's always good to be prepared for these things. So, several different ways you could do this. It doesn't take fancy equipment. Now, I did just buy these wick holders, and I got these from Amazon, and I thought it would be fun to give them a try since I was going to make this video anyway. Um, typically, I'll just use a couple of chopsticks. You can use pencils. There's a lot of things you can do to make candles with just stuff you have on hand. There will be some things that you'll need to buy. Um, if you don't keep bees, you'll want to buy some either some beeswax or some soy wax and that's what I have here soy wax wax flakes and this is what I'll be using I like to reserve my beeswax for making beauty products you know lip balm skin cream you know and things like that so I won't be using beeswax for these candles because it is a little more expensive than the soy wax so <clears throat> since these are emergency candles we're not using colors and I'm not I'm not going to be using any kind of scents However, you can do something like, you can buy stuff like this at a hardware store or whatever. It's just cotton twine. You do not want to use lead wicks or wicks with lead in because it's very toxic to breathe that stuff in. So getting a cotton or a hemp twine, you can find it, you know, in the butcher, uh, what's it called? Butcher string or something, butcher twine. Um, I got this one on Amazon, I believe, but then I realized I could have found it just in my local store, something very similar. <clears throat> you can also buy, and I've had these for a while, pre-made wicks with the little uh, holders at the bottom. And these are nice, however, the thing I don't like about these is that they're very long and most of the candles I make are short. Now these these are a good, well not very long, these are a good length for using in a mason jar like this, which by the way, all you need is some jars. You can use old peanut butter or jam jars. Um, and then I'll show you what you can do with this to make it stiff like this. This is, a, this is the same stuff. You can see it's a lot more stiff. Okay, obviously. And it's simply dipped in wax that I've melted. So, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by just taking a guess of how much soy wax I need. Since this, this is also new, normally I just have a little broken handled pot that I use, but I decided it was time to finally get something that had a pour spout that I didn't, that I wanted to use as a dedicated um, wax melter, because I'll use it for making my uh, frugal fire starters as well. You can find a video on that right up here in this corner. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in, in fact, I'm gonna use this jar right here. Bing, bang, bong, that's kind of the way I do things. I'm very, you know, messy. And as you saw in my tortilla making video, I just get into it. I don't know how to move slow, so that's part of the reason I make such a mess. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put this on the wood stove. I don't, this is probably not enough because when you're working with flakes, they melt down quite a bit. And the bell you hear, that's the dogs wanting out. It's a nice day, but it's very cold out, so they keep wanting out and back in and out and in. 
So I'm going to go let them out for a few minutes and go put this on the wood stove. All right, so while I have that wax melting on the wood stove, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can use these little guys. And again, this is the first time I actually bought these. Sometimes on certain um, tea lights and votive candles, they have ones that you can save and reuse them. I've actually done that before. It just depends on how they're made. These ones aren't the kind. If they have the hole like that, and then the hole is smashed, it's not as easy. But some of them are more like um, like a pincher. And all you have to do is spread that apart with um, a pair of forceps, and then put your wick in there, and then squeeze it shut again. It's, it's rather difficult to undo one of these. I tried, and it's like, wow, well, forget it. It's not worth it. I actually have another, a little pair of blue pliers that works really good for stuff like this, but I think they're in my sewing room. And then I remembered my squirt, so I thought I'd try this instead. So basically, you just want to thread that through. It would probably be easier to do it from the bottom up. I don't know, because I've never actually used these kind. Totally new. You just want to pinch that closed. Okay, so that's a good length right there. And I'm not going to stick that in there yet. I'll make another one that same length. So anyway, the one of the things I like about using this, then this, is then... Um, and I will link to these two, and I, I do recommend them. I've actually used quite a bit of them. And you can see I have a whole bunch... A lot of what you see in here is not really those, but it's ones I've made myself and then cut up and put in there. But I'll go ahead and show you how I make those. Uh, and, it, you know, I just think it's better to go ahead and get this and wax it yourself and then buy these things or even save all the ones that are reusable to do this with because they're going to save money and then you can cut... You, you can cut your pieces to fit. You don't have to, you know, waste, because you're going to pay more for this than you will for getting this and then a whole bunch of these. And so, anyway, again, you can find links to all of these items below, because I, because of where I live, um, we actually have a good store that has quite a bit of stuff. But there's a lot of things that's just easier or are more likely to find on Amazon in our remote area so i rely a lot on amazon this is actually a pretty good size for this but i think i'll make it's still just because you want it to be able to go up into your wick holder to keep it in place you're going to want it longer than your or you know longer than your jar is tall but i would say maybe an inch or so i don't know i'm not an expert candle maker i just do stuff i tried we've tried doing it so that we have just a wick like this with no holder to see if it would work and it would work but once you started burning the candle especially in something small like this and all the wax gets hot and melted then the wick would start floating around in there and it wouldn't be adhered to the bottom so it's really it's really a good idea to have these holders um one way you can do it is when you get once you get your wick in there is you can sandwich it this way i've done that it's a little tricky you can also use a single one and you can wrap it i've seen that done i've never tried it that way but you can wrap it to hold it in place but today we're going to be using these cool little wick holders and these were pretty cheap as well so and they're they're heavy duty so you know these will last forever and this, you can get them in a pack of as many as you wanted. And I got the smallest pack because I'm usually not making that many candles at a time. And this was a pack of six. And I think it was like six bucks maybe. I, I don't recall. You, you can find it in the link in the description box. And then I put these in here because um, these are obviously from tea lights. You use tea lights. And you can save these things and make your own little tea lights doing the same thing. Still waiting for the wax to finish melting. And so I'll get back to you when that's all ready to go. My wax is all melted. And I ended up having to add that much more again as it melted because the flakes take up a lot of space. So the first thing you want to do is you want to dip your little ends 
into the wax while it's melted and then get them in place. So these things have a few different holes so you can adjust it to fit your the, uh, the jar that you're using. Get that in the center and then put your holder on there. Or put your holder on there and then you can get it to fix where you want it. So you're going to want to let those cool so they're set where you want them before you start pouring your wax. And at any rate, whoops, you're still going to want to let your wax cool down. Now, normally I just pour the wax as it, when it's really hot. I don't even pay attention to the temperature. But apparently there is a best temperature to pour at. And of course, if your jars are cold, you don't want them you don't want to break your jars by putting hot wax in there. So the proper temperature should be between 130 and 140. And so this is still pretty hot. Now at this point, if you're going to add essential oils, then <clears throat> this is what you'll, you'll want to do it when it's in there now and then stir it for a couple minutes to get them evenly di distributed through the wax. So I'm going to let this wax cool down because it's right now at, looks like about 160. So I need to let it cool down about another 20 degrees. I almost forgot while we're waiting for that to cool, even though I don't need to make any more of these right now, you can cut off your, your piece of um, twine at whatever length you want. All right, and then you're going to dip it into your wax. And then you're going to want to lay it out flat. And again, I don't read instructions. I didn't follow anybody's advice on this. I just figured this one out on my own. I did happen to go read about temperature, the temperature thing because I thought I'd heard about that. So I went and looked it up before I started making this video just so I would know what to say because normally I just I don't mess around with that. Because obviously you don't want it to cool down too much. But apparently you get a better set if you get it, if you let it cool to the right temperature. Okay, so that's how easy it is to make the wicks. Just dip it in the hot wax while you're waiting for it to cool and then lay them out straight. And then once they're cool, you just peel them off there and you can just kind of break off any excess wax pieces. All right, so my wax is cooled down to a good temperature. I'm going to go ahead and pour it and we'll see how well I do I'm trying to pour around these little guys. Okay, and then here's my wicks that I made, my other ones. Okay, and then you can just, they're still actually a little bit soft. Soy wax is super easy to work with. You might even, it's a very soft wax. You might even be better using a, a paraffin wax for making your wicks because it will, they'll make them a little bit stiffer. This is the first time I actually use the soy wax for making the wicks. But anyway, so there, those are. And I'll let these cool, and I'll come back when they are when they are all cooled off and ready to trim. Well, it looks like my candles are set, so I'm going to take these little holders off. These ones are way longer than they needed to be. Actually, these are still a little bit soft, these bigger ones. They're obviously going to take longer. <coughs> But these ones here, well, they're a little bit warm. So I'm just trimming them to there. So now I've got some nice little candles for light. Okay, as things would have it, I ran out of battery power after I was getting these lit. So I'm going to light them again um, so you can see how they look. Very simple to make. Very happy with this this size. It's my these two sizes are my favorites because they burn the most even. When you start getting into the bigger mason jars, they just don't burn as even. You tend to have a lot more wax on the outside edges, where these will burn more straight down. And especially with soy wax. Soy wax burns very evenly. That's the other reason I really like soy wax, and it burns for a long time. So this was my first time using these these wick holders 
They have a nice weight to them and I'm very, very pleased with it. So I'm not doing this method anymore. Um, I will be using these from now on. I'm really glad that I bought these. So I highly recommend them. Find the link to these in the description box below if you don't already have something like that. But again, you can, in a pinch, if you can afford to buy these, even though they're really cheap, you know, $6 is a lot when you don't have $6. But um, you can use a pencil or a couple pencils or a couple chopsticks. Like I said, you just hold the wick. You just kind of lay these, lay these like this and sandwich the wick in between or wrap the wick around. Um, so I'm real happy with them. Hope you liked my video and maybe learned something new. Gave you a few options of things you can try out. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.